Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show for Friday, September 14th, 2018. Welcome to another eBay video. For those of you guys who are watching my weather, and I know a lot of you are, since last Friday, it has been cloudy and rainy seven straight days. Now, I do realize the last three or maybe four videos it was not raining and was at least partly sunny. So this is payback for all that. And next week we have the effects of that hurricane coming up here, which they even said it's going to be more rain next week. That being said, let's get started with today's video. We're going to be talking about eBay seller locations and is eBay enforcing sellers to state their correct location like they said they would. We're going to talk a little bit about eBay advertising. We're going to talk a lot about returns and some other cool things including your comments, questions and concerns from last week's video. So that's where we're going to get started right now. On feedback, Dominic Battaglia said, you fitched in that second drink. I've only used auto feedback when I've upgraded my store. It works so far for me, but I may change that. Also on feedback and replying to that comment was Blue Llama Pilot eBay store. Not saying you haven't been watching for a long time, but if you haven't if you haven't seen the change for Joe that was up until about six months ago, he was on a weekly basis just casually and automatically going through his item shipped page and giving generic attaboy good seller feedback to every buyer, every transaction. One day it sank into him how often he would see a batch of return requests shortly after he left those undeserved positive feedbacks. Once he stopped that policy, his return rate plummeted. He went from practically guaranteed four or five returns a week to an average of close to eight a month. I pull those figures from his discussion since the change. Nixing the pain of 16 to 20 a month down to a much more manageable of eight or so a month is a no-brainer. Remember the point here was the old idea that poking a sleeping bear with a stick is never a good idea. His past policy of willy-nilly leaving positive feedbacks for all meant that the unhappy and semi-happy buyers were nudged into action. To jump on that a little bit, my returns have gone way down since I stopped leaving feedback in bulk. I've said it before and I'll say it here again, I'm done leaving bulk feedback even after people pay a certain amount of time. I leave feedback after I receive positive feedback. The climate has changed and I have to adapt to it. Not only am I seeing less returns, but I'm noticing I'm getting more positive feedbacks per month. It sounds crazy, but it's true. I'm going to talk more about returns after we get done with your comments, questions, and concerns. On promoted listings, Sue Cutler wrote, Thank you for another great video. I started using promoted listings in January. For three months, our sales doubled. Then that point, they suddenly tanked. We are listing the same quality merchandise. The promotions impressions are way down, very disappointing. P.S. I saw the second drink from the Fox News Cup of Life. Mousy Pluta Prestige wrote in on the mobile app. Here's a new one. I relisted two items that expired after 30 days through the mobile app. Just relisted, made no changes to anything. When I went to look at those items the next day, eBay had checked the box best offer for both of those items and put in a minimum automatic best offer reject dollar bid amount. What fresh hell is this? eBay has officially gone all pear shaped when they start messing with my listings without my knowledge or approval. WTF Joe. Two points there. For a long time I've heard about many glitches on the mobile app and I don't use it. I don't use it. Unless I'm on the road and a customer asks me a question, the mobile app is very handy for that and that kind of thing and also for seeing what I sold but I would not list using the mobile app unless I had no computer, no Mac. You also mentioned that you wanted to relist those 30-day items. Why don't you just do good till canceled? It's so much easier. That's all my listings are good till canceled and it works really easy for me. Pomona513 
wrote in about an email we've all been getting from eBay. Yay, I got to see the second drink. About those annoying eBay messages advising us to lower our prices, I've been getting them for a while too, both for items in carts and for watched items. No way will I ever do it. I feel my items are reasonably priced already. Furthermore, my items are usually buy it now with best offer, which works out well for me. Why would I lower the price on an item with best offer? If a buyer wants a lower price, they can just make an offer. I am still getting those emails from eBay and I'm disregarding them. Early on, I actually lowered prices to see if I would make any sales and I never made a single one. However, some people in the Facebook groups did make some sales using that, so you guys do whatever works for you. On feedback policy, Lady Liberty Stacker wrote, I have the exact same feedback policy as you, Joe. It totally makes sense. As far as I'm concerned, the transaction is not over until the item has been delivered to the buyer and the 30-day return policy has passed. If I get feedback from the buyer, I will give feedback right back. It has worked out very well for me. I like your idea of changing a listing for one day for a buyer instead of a best offer because you won't feel hijacked. I tried at one time with a pricey item over $100 when the buyer offered me $100 shipped. I explained I would accept his offer, but needed to change the listing first. Work like a charm. Thanks as always, Joe, for doing a great video. Have a great weekend. Red Neckerson's Resales wrote in about the still missing birdhouse, and he says, Hello, Joe. I haven't forgotten your birdhouse. My 91-year-old mom has been in the hospital and ICU. Thanks. Guy, I know exactly where you're coming from. Do what you got to do first. Biz Hacks wrote, that second drink was epic. You nailed Raccoon and Fitchy. <laughs> now the following comments, there's about, I guess, four or five of them. The following comments were all addressing the issue with the stalker. Vicky wrote, Hi Joe, you're absolutely right about the thumbs down still helping engagement in search rankings. So they are doing you a huge favor, which serves them right. I'm so sorry and horrified that someone made a video about your mother. My own mother passed two years ago, and I can't imagine. Thank you for sharing that with this community that cares for you greatly and will always support you. And FYI, your subs will only continue to grow, so it's only a matter of time before your stalker is going down. Losers always lose. Thank you for all you give, Vicky. Also, Wood and Stuff with Steve French wrote, Just when you think Fitch can't get any lower, he has to go and prove you wrong. Vagabond Brian wrote, the devil is always out making trouble. Fitch and Kuhn are fallen angels, sick bastards. Mercedes Lux wrote, Thank you again for the video. I always look forward to the latest info. It's Saturday around 4 p.m., 142 thumbs up and two thumbs down. When I got on here and watched your video, there was only one thumbs down. After watching the video, I noticed a second thumbs down was present. Joe, so very sorry about that horrible sick man making video of your beloved mom. This is very disturbing and just wrong, so wrong. I have not viewed the video, nor do I plan to view it. You said enough about it for me, so I'm passing on watching it, and I know I will want to open a can of whoop-ass on that guy. Your mom raised you right, as you're a wonderful man. To make this point, you have 13,000 subscribers that care about you. Julie wrote, I'm originally from Farmington Hills, Michigan. Westland is just a few minutes away. Wasteland always has been lower class people. I know some crazy bitches up there that will take care of this asshole for shits and giggles. They are relentless, LOL. And the last comment before we get into some new topics is from Judgment Care USA. Joe, I have never been able to play a video from ChuckFitchScammer.com site. The reason is installing Adobe Flash Player would add an avoidable internet security risk and information leak. I am perfectly able to play Flash in just about every video file known to man and computer. Is it possible to make the video file directly available? Yes. Yes, I could either email it to you or I could ask Matt to post it on another channel. I could probably do that. And speaking of that website, you had mentioned that you were unable to play Flash. I am not a code slinger. I know nothing about this kind of thing. But remember recently when eBay switched from HTTP 
to HTTPS to make it a safe site? Well, unbeknownst to me, I don't check these things. ChuckFitzScammer.com used to have HTTP instead of the newer and more safe HTTPS. I would never ever have known it or thought about it except somebody contacted me and told me about it the other day, like three or four days ago. You know, who would have thought? So I forwarded the information to Matt and lo and behold, look, it now has HTTPS. I <laughs> love it. Okay guys, recently eBay told us they were going to make changes. And one of the changes was that all sellers had to specify their exact location where they were shipping from. And I think this was a great idea. We need to know where we're buying from because sometimes it appears the item is closer than it really is. So the other night I was on eBay looking for something and I came across something that I didn't like to see. So we're going to do a quick cutaway and I'll be right back. Hey guys, I was on eBay the other day and I came across this. Look at the guy's item location. It simply says United States. Now I know for a fact some time ago eBay came out and said they would no longer allow this. But I'm wondering why it's still going on. The reason why I'm a little more concerned about this particular item is I had reason to believe it's a person who's shipping from overseas. This is a big box seller, somebody who sells a lot of this particular item. And I was wondering if he may have a warehouse somewhere in the United States, or maybe more than one, and he's shipping from several locations. But my point really is, why is he still allowed to have his item location simply as United States. Let's get back to the video. So yeah, apparently eBay is still letting people claim they're in the United States as their location. I should tell you that the account in question is what you would call a big box seller. And I was concerned that if I bought from him, the item would be coming from China as opposed to somewhere here in the United States. What I suspect is that he's selling China goods, but that he has warehouses here in the United States, probably California and Florida. And he's still getting away with listing his location as the United States. Have you guys still noticed this? If so, please comment below. eBay has announced they're going to start a media blitz advertising the site. They did a Facebook Live the other day about this with their eBay for Business account, and I saw it, and they're going to hopefully do it in the media and do it big time. eBay likes to hype the fourth quarter, and I know a lot of you guys and my Facebook friends live for the fourth quarter. Me, not so much. The fourth quarter is very melancholy for me. But some of you guys really enjoy a spike of sales, so hopefully eBay advertising is going to help you. I'm very happy to see that eBay is using its revenue that we pay them to give back to the community in the form of advertising. I think that's great. I didn't talk too much about returns in last week's video. I'm going to get to them shortly. I've got some interesting things to tell you. And I would like to tell you that in last week's video, do you know that my stalker actually filed a privacy complaint? Can you believe it? Only because I mentioned the fact that he works for Detroit Thermal Systems in Romulus, Michigan, which is a public company. I do not understand why he would feel that's a privacy violation unless he's afraid that other victims may contact Detroit Thermal Systems in Romulus, Michigan. And what's weird is that Fitch, my stalker, has tried to hurt me on eBay for the last six years not only by making fake bids on my account, but also by calling eBay and falsely reporting me. So tell me this, guys. How is him calling eBay and falsely reporting me for things I didn't do any different than me calling his employer? 
Hey, it's tit for tat. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. He thinks he's gonna call eBay and hurt me. It ain't gonna happen. I've noticed stalkers love to dish it out, but when you give it back to them, they can't take it. Am I right or am I wrong, guys? Okay, I thought so. Let us now, on that note, before we go any further, stop and take a drink from the Fox News Cup O-Life. This is drink number one from the Fox News Cup O-Life. Happy is he who drinks from it. Nice drink on a cloudy, rainy, dismal day. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I want to talk about returns now. I've noticed a very interesting trend. As I said earlier when I read the comment by Blue Llama Pilot eBay store, ever since I stopped leaving tons of bulk feedback at a time, I'm getting a lot less returns and that is great. Now I do realize we're all going to get a certain amount of returns, but lately my returns have been less than usual. One of those reasons has to be because sales have been less than usual. The summer was a lot slower for me than last year, and I've heard that from most sellers. But the last three weeks for me were super busy, super, super busy, although this week was just average. Now, I received three returns this week, okay? Three returns, which is my average for my normal busy weeks. But since I haven't had any, they all came this week. But each return is so far out there that I just have to tell you the story on each. All returns should go through the eBay process, all right? As long as they do it legit through the eBay process, I don't complain, all right? Even when the person tries to pull a fast one and they say it's not as described even though it really is, if it's through the eBay process, I can then call concierge and get it made right. You know that's true because I've talked to you about that in the weeks past. What I despise are people who try and circumvent the eBay process. And they are insistent. So here is story number one. This older guy with zero feedback on a guest account buys a center cap for an alloy wheel. Those things are always trouble. Obviously he didn't read the listing and knows nothing about eBay. He gets the cap, it's wrong. Instead of filing through eBay, he contacts me directly. And I said to him, I will take the item back, but it's gonna be done through eBay. And he says, no, I wanna do it now over the phone. I said, that's not going to happen. I said, you didn't call, if you would've called me and bought this over the phone, then we could rectify it over the phone. You didn't do that. You bought through eBay, so we're gonna rectify it through eBay. I said, you have to open a return request say it doesn't fit, and I'll gladly take the item back. What does he do? He goes ahead and sends me the item without opening a return request, thereby screwing himself. But the best is yet to come. I wanna show you this package. You're gonna love this. So, so I get this box in the mail the other day, completely wrapped in brown paper. Here's the address. I ripped it all off so you can see. There's the address, okay? And as soon as I felt the box, I could tell it was a priority mailbox. What this guy did, and I do believe this is a federal violation, he covered up a priority mailbox with brown paper to save on the shipping. Unbelievable but true. Now he's screwed, he's screwed. My question to you guys, what would you guys do in this situation? He did not return it through the eBay system, all right? Now, if I go and give him his money back as it is now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get protected. This is unbelievable, guys. In this day and age, people do something like that. Case number two. I received another item back the other day. I open it up, and it's something I don't remember selling for a long time. And there's a note in it. It says, this is the wrong size. It is too small for my 2000, year 2000 car. And the item that I sent them was a 1993 item. 
So I went back and looked and I sold this item two and one half months ago. Absolute balls of steel. What they want me to do is they bought a hub for 1993, okay? Although they have a 2000, they're making it sound like I sent them the wrong item. They're saying, you sent me an item that won't fit my 2000. Well, of course it won't, because you bought in 1993. They want me to ship them the more expensive piece at the cheaper price they paid without paying any more shipping. Absolutely, positively not going to happen. Absolutely, positively not going to happen. I'm wondering if any of you guys had anything like this happen recently. And the third return was similar to the first. A guy once again called me up and said it's the wrong item. I said, hey, why are you calling me? And I'm having a hard time getting my point across as to why these people need to return it on eBay. All three customers had zero feedback using those guest accounts with the computer generated names. Have any of you guys noticed that? So those are my three weird return stories for the week. My question to you guys is what is your opinion on those three stories or any one of those stories? Comment below. And do you guys often get people calling you, circumventing the eBay contact system, wanting to return an item without going through eBay? That really bums me out. Oh no, I won't do it. I accept 30 day returns for any reason. All right? Two of the three were within the 30 day time period. But the last one was not. The last one was not. Not the last one. The second one was not. So we have an issue with that. Definitely. What's your opinion? I'd like to know. What I'll do right now, something I did last week late in the video, is I'm going to stop and take a second drink. This is drink number two from the Fox News Cup of Life. A drink on a damp, dismal day from the Fox News Cup of Life. I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. Let's bring this to a close now because I've gone way overboard on time. First of all, remember the following things. I'm Crazy New York Driver and you're not. I make these videos every week to help you sell on eBay and succeed. If you think I'm doing a good job, please leave me a thumbs up as it tells me that I'm appreciated and I'm getting the word out. If you don't think I did a good job, comment in the comment section what you want me to cover next week and maybe I'll be reading your comment live on the air. And guys, I am a seller friend, not a seller critic or skeptic of any kind and I'm still making money online. Thank you for watching this video. I hope every one of you guys makes a lot of money on eBay this week next week and every week after that because that is my goal to see all of you guys succeed i love to see people making money thank you for watching go out there i hope you all make a ton of money rock on and remember these three words you thought i was going to forget them don't be fitchy <laughs> peace yeah uh. Extra special bonus for those of you guys who watched the entire video. Last night, which was Thursday night, we had our monthly eBay meetup in New York City, and I figured I'd show you a picture of us. What happened is, we all got together as usual, and after the meetup, some of us split off and went to an Italian restaurant, including three eBay employees. It is very important, guys, and I stress this, whether you're a big seller or a small seller, to get involved with your local eBay meetup groups. I'm not saying you have to go to every single meeting, but go when you can, get to be friends with some of the other sellers, and more than likely, they will send, at some point, some eBay representatives to hobnob with your group. It's very important to get to know the people in the know. Stay connected, stay in touch with your fellow sellers. Guys, as I always say, thank you for watching. I'm Crazy New York Driver, and I hope you enjoyed this little bonus picture.